Where do I start? Uh, it was 1990, 92, uh, coming out of a small town, Vernon, Texas. Uh, I had started a band and uh, with my brothers and somehow we ended up in the, the Rio Grande Valley. And we had been there on a tour for about uh, eight months. And uh, I've never been on tour. Uh, I didn't know anything about the road. Uh, I didn't have any contacts. Uh, I had just given my life to the Lord. And, but I wanted to do something that I knew how to do. I didn't want to have to change uh, who I was, I, and you know what, and I, I, I prayed to the Lord, my prayer was, how can I serve you? Uh, I, I, I don't know how to do this. And, and I clearly heard uh, the voice of the Lord, uh, and this is what the voice uh, came back, it says, do what you know how to do, uh, and we'll use it. Uh, to win souls for my kingdom. I didn't know how to uh, really sing. I, I didn't really have a band, per se, an established band. And uh, I didn't know anything about the road. So I told my brothers, I said, why don't, why don't we go on the road and, and do what we love to do? Let's do something that we all love to do. We play a little music, uh, quit your jobs and sell everything and, and we'll be a full-time band and, and uh, uh, you just never know who we're going to meet or what's going to happen. Uh, well, going forward a little bit, we, we sold the houses and the cars and... and uh, I remember we bought a, a small little bus and a trailer and uh, we began to sing in, in little towns. Uh, we came through Austin, San Antonio and, and I met a guy and he said, uh, have you gone to the valley? Have you ever been to the Rio Grande Valley? I said, I don't even know where that's at. He goes, well, uh, go to the Rio Grande Valley and, and there's a lot of little churches that would love to have you sing at their places. So I don't know how it was, but we made our way over there and uh, we were there for eight months and uh, we were going from uh, small little churches of uh, that were in the, in, in all these little towns that that we ran across and uh, if, if you're from the valley you know it's like a little metroplex dallas texas metroplex san antonio metroplex uh chicago and and uh so we went there and, and uh, i remember uh we were playing in in the parks outside and and uh we finally uh came up with eight original songs uh, and one of the, the, the songs that was uh, uh, recorded in those days it was I, I named it entitled Atrás No Quiero Volver that was my first cassette it was cassettes in those times in those years and uh, I remember <laughs> we, we found the studio uh a guy uh, by the name of Tino Quintero, uh, he invited us to his TV show. And uh, we took the invitation and, and he said, hey, my cousin owns a studio. Why don't you uh, go record there? And uh, to make a long story short, uh, we ended up in the studio Pro Sound in McAllen uh, on 10th Street. And uh, it was a very, very nice studio. So we got in there and uh, we recorded the uh, 
eight original songs that that uh, we had been playing eight months every night we were we were playing at different little churches and uh it came uh uh, uh the recording came to an end and, and and the guy said it's going to be this much money i said well uh we got half of it can we pay you uh uh in payments uh, uh how can we do this he said well yes you can pay in payments but your master uh your cd is not going to leave the building so we left with no recording the album was finished and uh i remember two weeks after uh it got kind of bad financially and we decided to say you know what let's go home we, we, we there's nothing here let's 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 go back home and and get a job and 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 we just forget about all this because it was one of the hardest things that I have ever done and I didn't have no contacts and I didn't know anybody uh, uh, in the music uh, industry I didn't know any pastors uh, I didn't know who to call and uh, we decided to go back home uh, we drove back to Vernon and uh, we were there for a week and uh, my brother uh, was, we were all staying at mom's house because we had sold our house. We had sold our cars, we had quit our jobs. And one day my, my father came to me, he said, Paul, uh, there's a man that is uh, calling and, and uh, he wants to talk to you. He says that they're a radio station out of McAllen, Texas, at the time, the radio station was in San Juan, Texas. He said his name is Pablino Bernal. I have heard of Pablino Bernal, but I didn't know who he was. Uh, I didn't know the history the, the, that he was uh, uh, per se uh, a musician in, in the world and now a musician in the church. And... Uh, well, I answered the phone. I, I, I called him back, and and uh, this this guy answered. His name was Tino Quintero. He said, "Look, I don't know if you remember me, but you came and you were on my uh, TV show." I said, "Yeah, yeah, I remember you." He said, "Well, Pablino Bernal is doing a huge fiesta cristiana." And many bands are coming, and uh, he wants you and your brothers to come. And I, and I told him, I said, look, we just left over there. We, we were over there for eight months, and, and I can ask my brothers, but I, I, don't, I just don't see it happening. I talked to my brothers, and I said, hey, they, they want us to go back to McAllen. And, and uh, their answer was, no, we, we, we don't want to do this. It's, we're not, we just left over there. We're not, we're not going back. And uh, I called them and, and told them, you know what? Uh, we're, we just decided not to thank you for the invitation, but we decided that uh, we're not going to go. And uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, a few days after we, uh, we talked and said, look, we're not working. We're all here at mom and dad's and let's go, let's go check it out. See what happens. It was a two week tour that they were going to do in McAllen, uh, Reynosa, Matamoros, uh, Laredo, uh, San Antonio. It was a big thing that they were doing. And I called him back and I said, look, uh, we'll go ahead. If we can still go, we want to go ahead and, and take the invitation. So here we go back from Vernon to McAllen. I, I want to say at least uh, 12 hours, 13 hour drive. Uh, we ended up uh, getting to uh, McAllen the next day, the Rio Grande Valley. And uh, I remember when, when they, we went to the address that they had given us, it was a radio station. And again, the radio station was La Nueva Radio Cristiana, and it was in San Juan, Texas. And that was 
Pablino Bernal's ministry. And when we got there, uh, I remember he was on the radio. Pablino Bernal was speaking on the radio and, and, and he was announcing us. Uh, Paul Ochoa and the Milagros and, and, uh, and I said, wow, I never had heard myself on the radio. And he had a copy of the CD that, that was stuck in, in, the, in the studio uh, two weeks, three weeks prior to that. And I was wondering, wow, how did he get a copy? We, we, we hadn't even heard the CD yet, uh, the cassette. And uh, when we uh, heard it on the radio, I mean, it, it, was, it was so uh, excited. I mean, we had never heard ourselves on the radio. And, and I remember uh, Pablino Bernal walking out of the radio and when I first shook his hand, uh, I really didn't know who he was. Uh, and I shook his hand. He said, I'm glad that y'all came. He said, uh, tonight we're going to be in Laredo, Texas. It was a Monday. And I remember why it was a Monday. Because every Monday uh, he had... Uh, he was at the uh, uh, Civic Center uh, uh, right there uh, in Laredo, Texas, every Monday. And uh, I didn't know where Laredo was at that time. I didn't know where Laredo was at. And I said, well, uh, how far is Laredo from here? He said, it's uh, about three hours. I said, wow, we just drove like 13 hours. I, I said, honestly, we don't have no gas money. We're, we're out of money. And I remember him putting his hand in his coat pocket and he gave me money. He said, go and eat and uh, uh, fill your, your gas, your, your van up with gas and, and go to Laredo. This is where we're going to be. And I remember when we first got there to Laredo, uh, to the Civic Center, there was about three to four thousand people there uh, coming out of Nuevo Laredo for people from Mexico from all over San Antonio from uh, Carrizo Springs from Pearsall from Cotula from Encinal San Ignacio from Zapata they were all coming in and, and I had never seen I have never been in a concert or a gig that big uh, in my life and uh, I remember when we got there the Conjunto Bernal was there already and, you know they had the big buses and, and and they were setting up and and we didn't have no equipment we didn't have no PA equipment we didn't I mean we didn't have no PA equipment but I remember uh, when we got there they were like waiting for us to give us the welcome uh, uh, to be there that night. And, and, and uh, Pablino Bernal was still not there. He was at the radio still, but he was coming in. And uh, when I first heard Pablino Bernal y el Conjunto Bernal, I fell in love. I fell in love with the, with the music. I, I never, I never had heard real singers like the Vernales, like like the the voices that they had. And uh, uh, I remember I was nervous, and, and and I sat in the very front. There was thousands of people, and I remember I sat in the very front. And I, I wasn't missing a beat. I was watching him every minute, every second. And I remember I said these words to myself and to the Lord. I said, Lord, I want what he's got. I want to do what he's doing. I, I, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I want to do what he's doing. And I remember that night when he got done singing, he said, and now I want to invite my friends from Vernon, Texas. 
Paul Ochoa in the Milagros. I was so nervous. I, I didn't really know what to do. I played the piano accordion, but, but I didn't even know how to play it. I just wanted to play it. But here I was fixing to play in front of the main guy from the accordions, the, the master of accordions. He had mastered this thing. And I was all nervous. I didn't know what to do. And uh, we began to sing. And I remember when we began to sing, it was me, my brother Sammy, my brother Saul, my brother Daniel, and my cousin David. We were all nervous. We, I mean, it was, this, was, this was very shocking to us. I remember that he ran up on stage, Pablino Bernal himself. And he, he ran up there and he grabbed his accordion. And he began to play the accordion. And, and, and I don't know what happened with my accordion, but, but I think I just threw it down. I don't know what happened, but he began to play the song that we were playing. I remember the song, it was Ya Cristo Viene. Señales I, 1991, 1992, Laredo, Texas for the first time. And now not only uh, uh, coming to the Fiesta Cristiana, but now sharing stage with Pablino Bernal was like, that was a gift that God had given to us to be able to share stage with Mr. Pablino Bernal y el Conjunto Bernal. I remember when, 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 when we got done, all the people was, was coming. We, we, I mean, it was crazy. And, 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 and all the cassettes, the cassettes, uh, they would sell hundreds and hundreds of cassettes. And I remember he came up to me at the end of the, the service and he gave me a wad of money and you know what I I, I just grabbed it and, and put it in, in my coat pocket and I got in the van and, and he said meet me in McAllen tomorrow because we're going to be in Reynosa tomorrow. No, in Matamoros at the Plaza de Toro. He said, go to McAllen tonight, rent your motel. And he gave me that money. We got in the van and I began to count the money. And I'll say this because it is what it was. That's what it was. I began to count the money and I counted uh, 1,000, uh, 2,000, uh, 3,000, and then 4,000, and then 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 to play in one night. I never had no one give me that kind of money. And I told my brothers, and my brother Daniel said, Paul, count it again. You need to count it again. And I counted it, and it was eight grand. And we went, and we were in McAllen. We couldn't believe it. The next day, I remember the next day, the address that he gave us, it was his house. And we went, and, 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 and there his beautiful home is, his wife Mary. I met Mary for the first time. And I went in, and, and uh, there was an office before you went in the house. And here comes Mr. Pablino Bernal himself to greet us again. And he told me, he said, uh, 
I need to speak to the leader of this band. And uh, I said, well, we're all leaders of the band. And he looked at me like, uh, no, but I need the leader of the band. I said, we are all leaders of the band. This is, we're all brothers. He said, no, but who's in charge? I said, we're all in charge of the band. And he was like, no, 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 no. There's got to be someone that's in charge of the band. I was the youngest out of all my brothers. And my brother Sammy said, Paul, why don't you go and be the leader of the band? I said, I can't be the leader of the band. I'm the youngest. Y'all need to go. He said, no, Paul, you go. You're, you need to be the leader of the band. So I went. And he took out another wad of money. And he gave me another 8,000. Two days, $16,000. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm glad I came. And I remember he told me, he said, Paul, I'm going to play your music. He said, but... I want to ask you something, Paul. I'm going to change the name of your band. Because in those years, the band was only named Los Milagros. It was Los Milagros only. He said, I want to change your name to the band. And I want to put Paul Ochoa y Los Milagros. He's the one that gave me that name, Pablino Bernal. And when the two weeks finished, he told me, I want to ask you something. I want to talk to you and your brothers. And this is what he asked me. He said, are you willing to move to McAllen to come and join the ministry with Pablino Bernal Ministry? I said, no, I don't think my brothers would do it. I mean, all our families in Vernon. He said, this is what I'll do for y'all. I'll get y'all the house. I'll turn all the bills on. I'll buy you all the equipment that you need. I'll give y'all a trailer. I'll give y'all a van. But you have to live here in the valley. I talked to my brothers. And two weeks became almost 30 years, 30 something years that I work with Mr. Paulino Bernal. And I want to tell you something. I wouldn't have changed nothing. I would do it again. He was a blessing in my life. And uh, I got to meet, like I said, the whole family. And uh, we are going to miss him but his music will live forever. As we were singing one day in San Antonio, his son came up to me, Paulino Bernal Jr. He said, Paul, I want you to give me 10 original songs. He said, and I'm going to pay for the tab I'm gonna pay I don't want you to play no music I'm I'm gonna get musicians for you he said I want you to focus on 10 original songs and as we begin to record them as we begin to do the songs I had recorded wrote one song many years before I met them and it was called solo tu and a lady came to Vernon one day and I sang that song in that Baptist church Sunday morning. She came up to me. She said, I would love to record this song. And I said, it would be an honor for me, Sister Maria Elena, for you to record my song. 
She grabbed it and I said, if I can, can I sing it with you? She said, of course you can. At the time that she was recording it, David Lee Garza y los musicales, they did all the music and Maria Elena recorded it right here in San Antonio. And I remember when the CD came out, Solo Tu, my brother Sammy somehow got a hold of a copy of it. He said, Paul, Maria Elena just finished the song and David Lee Garza y los musicales played the music, Paul. You got to hear it. And when I heard the song, I never recorded it because I knew that I couldn't record it in that level of sound. And I couldn't record it in that level of music arrangements. So I left it alone for many years. And I remember, I told myself, when I record this song, if I ever do, it's got to be with somebody special. And I want to record it at least at the same level of sound and music arrangements. And it was like in the back burner for many years. And we had, we needed one more song to finish the album for Pablino Vernal Jr., which is Pablino Vernal's son. He told me, Paul, we need one more song. Do you have another original? I said, I do. I do. And as we began to put it together and make the arrangements of this song that you will, you will hear here after a while, I called Paulino Vernal. It was about 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night on a Tuesday night. And I said, Paulino Vernal, will you do me the favor to come and play the accordion on this song? He said, yes, I will. And I told the engineer, he said, he said, what did Pablino Bernal say? And I told him, I said, he told me that he will, but he's going to get here about two or three o'clock in the morning because they're coming in from La Fiesta Cristiana in San Antonio. He said, ah, well, I just don't see it happening, but if he told you, yes, I got to see this. And we, we were recording, and 2 o'clock, 2.30 came around in the morning. And my phone rang, and there was a knock in the studio. The studio was is right there at the Valley Worship Center in, on, on McCall, North McCall, in McAllen. Texas and I opened the door and it was Pablino Bernal he said I come to add my accordion to your song and I kept it there for years I kept it there for years and today I want to share this song with you a song that is very special to me that Pablino Bernal and I recorded for you guys and I want you to check it out. la 
vida que 